It's hard to convey something like the Higgs boson because it's a difficult concept, but I think if you do it right, people like a good story. People love a good narrative. You know, perhaps once in a lifetime, something will happen that changes the course of history forever. We are faced with another incredible leap forward, one which stretches the limits of our imagination, yet one which will surely have a great effect upon each and every one of us on this planet in the not so distant future. I am speaking, of course, about the superconducting super collider, a 52 mile oval shaped tunnel. I in which pushed very hard for something called the superconducting super collider in some curious place. I think it was Texas. Texas, is that the right place? Walks a hatch, as the governor said. Uh, in order to, and that where the uh, drive was many things, but in order to focus the drive, we talked about the Higgs particle. The hope is that the appearance of new particles with exotic names like Higgs bosons, squarks, and sleptons will open new vistas of inner space. Uh, but I was a propagandist for it. I was, you know, I was, I just said that's the, that um, the Higgs is a, is a very powerful argument for building this machine. And there are other arguments. There was a new a new energy frontier, and there are all these other ideas of supersymmetry and other potential discoveries. And as many as 500 visiting scientists. Uh, but we pushed hard, and we gave you know millions of talks around the country, and uh, then we had to convince the Department of Energy it was a good thing to do. Then we had to convince the President of the United States. So that was uh, President Reagan at the time. And we had to make a video that was less than 10 minutes. That, we could show the president that he would understand why we wanted a superconducting super collider to find the Higgs particle. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> First, we had students. They would, uh, we had middle school students come in to visit the laboratory, and three young scientists who showed the kids around, and we planted a certain number of questions with the kids, and we had them uh, spontaneously ask questions too, and that went around for about 20 minutes, and then we cutting room floor, and we excised. We had 10, I thought, very solid minutes. We were told it's got to be nine minutes, not 10, you know. And uh, so we eventually made it nine minutes, and that didn't go over at all. Way too complicated, they said. No, it's way too, too hard. So what are we going to bring in third graders? You know, that doesn't work. So, so we uh, replaced the students' questions with uh, voiceover questions that uh, a commentator would make. This one asked this question, and those questions were a slightly simpler level, and that was still didn't go over. So our, I was desperate and woke up at 3 in the morning with a new idea. We rented an actor from the Chicago Actors Bureau, and he was a judge. And we got him a nice... Uh, a uh, Vicuna coat and, um, you know, a nice hat and a, uh, borrowed a Rolex watch for him and got out of his car and the voiceover said, meet Sylvester something or other the third who was a federal judge and he's at this and this court and he's come to visit a large government laboratory. He's visiting a Department of Energy laboratory that is involved in basic research. The laboratory is the site of a large particle accelerator this is the first visit to a science laboratory for the judge, and he's curious. He says, well, I moved in here a year ago, and I've been driving past your laboratory. I don't know anything about atoms. You know, I was an intelligent layperson who was not afraid to say, I don't understand. I have no idea what goes on here. I read articles in the newspapers about quarks and leptons, and I know you generate billions of volts of energy, but I don't know how it happens. Well, why don't we go off and talk about it a little bit? That'd be great. And so for eight and a half minutes, they explained to him what they were doing, and at the end of that, he shoots his cuffs, you know, very good actor. And he says, gee, thanks a lot. He says, I, I really appreciate your time. I have to confess, I really didn't understand much of what you said, but I got a sense of the, the adventure. It's like you're in the... You're in the wilds of the country on horseback all by yourself. You're trying to cope, you know, a little bit, a little bit. We thought too heavy, but that's what we did, and that was very successful. Well, that is very exciting. 
I gather that you're exploring a new world with the same sense of adventure that all explorers throughout history have experienced. Now, I know I would never be able to repeat all that I've heard, but, well, at least I have some idea of what you're after and how you go about it. And apparently the cabinet was sort of split on this issue, and Reagan read a poem. He had a poem in his pocket, and uh, he said, I'd rather be, you know, a star flaming out than being a bo boring planet that doesn't do anything. You know, it was sort of like that. And his last statement was, uh, he quoted a, a football quarterback for, uh, for those times uh, saying, throw deep. And then he walked out and the cabinet looked at each other and somebody said, I think he's for it. <laughs> oh, it would have been the big scientific prize. I mean, this machine would have been exactly how you wanted to go explore uh, the Terra scale, the, the new energy scale where we know stuff is happening and there must be very Im impressive answers out there. It would have been online about now. It would have been a better machine than the LHC. Uh, it was a great idea, but things went wrong. Uh, the price escalated. Having an original estimate of about $3 billion turned into one about 10. Ultimately, Congress just felt it was too costly. You know, a lot of physicists who just were like, their worlds were shattered. Just have this big you know, hole in the ground now. Had we uh, had that machine now, boy, we, we would have a, at least seriously addressed some of the most incredibly interesting problems uh, in the history of particle physics, in my opinion.